The Functional Communication Profile Revised, also known as FCPR, by Kathleen Zori, Laura Stanowitz, Mike Iger, Antonia Stack, and Rachel Vain. The intent of the functional communication profile is to offer a sensible and organized method of evaluating communication skills in individuals across age ranges with developmental and acquired delays. This test was developed with clients who have developmental and acquired delays in mind, particularly individuals with autism spectrum disorders. The functional communication profile assesses clients on 11 major skill categories of communication and related aspects, including sensory, motor, behavior, attentiveness, receptive language, expressive language, pragmatic and social, speech, voice, oral, and fluency. In each area being tested, there are assessment items which include for sensory motor, the assessment items are auditory, visual, gross motor, and fine motor skills and behavior. For attentiveness, the assessment items are attention span, alertness, response levels, cooperation, and level of awareness. For receptive language, comprehension of verbal and nonverbal language and basic concepts, interest in pictures and objects, following commands, and object and two-dimensional recognition and for expressive language, verbal and nonverbal communication, manner and modality of communication, quality of self-expression, object use and interactions, cause and effect, vocabulary, grammar, and phrase length. For pragmatic and social language, the assessment items are communicative intent, questioning skills, conversational skills, turn-taking, topic initiation, maintenance and elaboration, appropriateness of communication, reading and literacy, writing and spelling, and memory. For speech, intelligibility of sounds produced, dentition and oral imitation. For voice, loudness, vocal quality, and pitch. For oral, mouth breathing, drooling, tongue thrust, and swallowing, and diet. Fluency includes fluency, rate of speech, and rhythm and intonation, and for non-oral communication, use of sign language, two-dimensional expression, yes-no, fine motor abilities, and effectiveness of current augmentative or alternative communication system. Test materials include the following. Examiner's Manual, Functional Communication Profile Revised Forms, and assorted manipulatives, which are not included in the test package. <music> Suggested manipulatives are age-appropriate stimuli and environmental items that are familiar to the in individual. Optional items for nonverbal clients include electronic augmentative voice output devices and switches, handheld electronic devices, desktop computer, notebook computer, word processor, Canon communicator. Each section of this test asks the clinician to choose an appropriate response based on the option provided. The options provided differ for each question. A brief description is provided for each option. In the sensory motor section of the test, the clinician is asked to assess the frequency and duration of eye contact. The provided options are adequate, mild deficits, fair, poor, best with objects, best with persons, avoids, none, non-applicable, due to blindness. Following each option is a brief example. For instance, adequate, looks at the speaker regularly and for a reasonable appropriate amount of time. In the attentiveness section of the test, the clinician is asked to assess the response rate of the client. The provided options are appropriate, impulsive, mild delays, moderate delays, severe delays, mixed. Following each option is a brief example. For instance, appropriate, 
responds with a reasonable amount of time once the stimulus is presented. Since the functional communication profile is an informal instrument, no scoring system exists. Rating the impairment level for each of the 11 categories is a subjective decision based on the responses to the test items and your general impression. The rating is entirely based off a clinician's knowledge, judgment, and experiences, and due to this, results may vary from one clinician to the next. The parameters which are needed to rate the individual are severity of impairment, ranging from normal, mild, moderate, severe, to profound, frequency of occurrence, mode of communication, degree of independence versus assistance or prompting, quality of performance, and inventory skills. All of these depend on the test item. How to give the test. First, note on the front of the FCPR record form the following. Is this an initial evaluation or a reevaluation? And what methods of administration are or were being used? Also record the patient's basic information, diagnosis, and relevant history. Now beginning at subscale 1, administer and begin filling in all evaluation items. Do note that the test does not give explicit instructions on how to orient a client to a task. The clinician must prep ahead of time in order to understand what an item requires and which age-appropriate stimulus manipulatives are to be used. Some items can be marked using information from a patient's case history or a caregiver slash guardian. The clinician must indicate the level of prompting slash assistance used. Continue this process for the remaining subscales in the testing manual. Also note that non-oral clients must be given an additional assessment item set, non-oral communication. If a client is verbal, you can note so and skip this section. There is a summary section at the end of the test that only allows write-in answers. The summary assessment items include test results, current communication objectives, communication strengths, and so on. The functional communication profile, on average, takes 45 to 90 minutes to administer. This depends on a client's chronological age, behaviors, and severity of impairments slash deficit. Catherine is a five-year, four-month-old girl who was in a car accident one month prior and suffered a traumatic brain injury. Catherine lives at home with both her parents, her two-year-old sister, and nine-year-old brother who were not involved in the accident. All children are reported to have developed normally. Catherine was the result of a normal pregnancy and birth. Catherine attends kindergarten at the local public elementary school. After the accident, Catherine's parents noticed she was having difficulty finding the right words to express herself and was becoming frustrated as a result. She also struggled with maintaining a conversation for more than two to three turns. Her kindergarten teacher noticed Catherine's attention skills had decreased and she was not participating as much as she had before the accident. Catherine struggles to communicate most in social situations and when talking to new people. She also struggles with her short-term memory. She has not previously received speech therapy. Catherine likes to play house and pretend cooking, but she has trouble initiating these activities. She is also unable to name many of her toys. The following is a segment from the sensory motor subscale. The test items you will see are auditory localization and visual tracking. Catherine, let's look at the pictures in this book. Here's a little girl in a tutu. Here's a puppy. Catherine, can you follow the pencil from the little girl to the puppy? Here is... Based on Catherine's performance during this section, the clinician can also fill in an answer for the following test items. Attention span, eye contact, visually inspects objects, and head and trunk positioning. The following is a segment from the attentiveness subscale. The test items you will see are distractible and response rate. Catherine, we're going to read some of this book. Fancy Nancy and the Posh Puppy. I am ecstatic. That's a fancy word for happy. We are going to get a puppy, a real one. I hope we get a papillon like our neighbor's dog. Catherine, do you like puppies? What's your favorite animal, Catherine? Cat. What's your favorite color? 
purple. I like purple too. Based on Catherine's performance during this section, the clinician can also fill in an answer for the following test items. Alertness, awareness of others, attention span, and cooperation. The following is a segment from the receptive language subscale. The test items you will see are response to name, routine commands, and gives objects to speaker. Catherine? Catherine, can you give me the book, please? Thank you. Can you clap your hands? Good job. Can you shake your head? Good job. Can you smile? Beautiful. Based on Catherine's performance during this section, the clinician can also fill in an answer for the following test items. Oral comprehension, understands basic concepts, responds to attention commands, looks at pictures and object identification. The following is a segment from the expressive language subscale. The test items you will see are descriptive language and appropriate object use. Catherine, can you tell me what's happening in this picture? Um, she's drawing. What else do you see in this picture? I don't know. Do you see anything that's pink? No, I don't know. Can you tell me some things that are yellow? No, I don't know. Okay, let's do something else. Let's pretend that we're at a restaurant. Do you know what to do with these? Can you show me? Good job. Good job. What about the napkin? Great job, Catherine. Based on Catherine's performance during this section, the clinician can also fill in an answer for the following test items verbal status, expressive level, methods of communication, self-expression, quality of self-expression, object interaction, appropriate object use, basic communication, and vocabulary. The following is a segment from the pragmatic social language subscale. The test items you will see are answers who, what, and where, and answers yes, no questions. Catherine, can you tell me who lives in the barn? Uh, um, uh, cow. Good job. Catherine, what's your favorite food? Mm. Pizza. I like pizza too. Catherine, where do you go to school? You don't know? That's okay. Do you like school? Do you have a lot of friends at school? Do you like to play outside? Based on Catherine's performance during this section, the clinician can also fill in an answer for the following test items, turn-taking and topic maintenance. As previously mentioned, the outcomes of the test are not finite results as much as they are the examiner's interpretations of their language skills. However, the clinician can expect to find accurate results from this test because of the multitude of subtests. The evaluation items are comprehensive and occasionally reoccur in different subtests, which gives a complex profile of one's language abilities. A clinician will be able to assign each speech and language area a level of impairment, if any, based on the client's performance. Pros of the functional communication profile are that it's informal, so it can be used on a number of different patients with varying skill sets ranging from mild to profound impairments. It includes a wide age range with a chronological age ranging from three years to adult and a mental age as low as one to two months. Sections can be skipped since it's non-standardized. Administration time can vary since no exact time frame exists for completion and it's comprehensive in that it tests 11 major skill categories of communication and related aspects. 
Cons of the functional communication profile are that the scoring is based on judgment, so it may be difficult for beginning clinicians with limited experience to score. It covers so many skill categories that if a patient has a specific deficit in one area, it may not fully evaluate them in that area. Since the age range is so wide, it might be difficult to assess someone with a mental age of one month, and it's difficult to administer due to brief instruction and focus on observations and judgments of the clinician.